Hey everybody, Huckoo here with my review for Tower of God chapter 345 or season 2 episode 265. Man, just the beginning of every video having to be like, okay, remember the numbers for all that. So uh, yeah, either way, really really good one, our second chapter I believe in the virtual floor, and I love this setup. It, it was more setting up the arc than anything else still. But, uh, man, I love this arc setup so much, and I feel like there are so many good stories they can tell here, or so you can tell here. So, um, either way, let's talk about this part by part. First off, Bomb wakes up to Yu Han Sung and freaks out accordingly because he has sort of a past with him. Uh, then I find it funny as well, though, that Yu Han Sung doesn't really know them because, uh, it's the past, the regular him, so he doesn't no bomb or Andrasi yet. He's just like, yeah, you seem to know the real me, or the outside me, um, or the current me. But he does know Bomb's name, which I think is interesting, and he's been waiting for him. Uh, when asked about how, he says it's sort of an intuition, like he's heard it somewhere before. That is sketchy. I think he's maybe hiding something, and I think we're supposed to think that maybe he's hiding something. Or perhaps it is some sort of intuition. Maybe he's being manipulated by some outside force. No real way to tell there. Um, I also love just the little background scene, though, how they both don't trust him and pour out the coffee as he's walking away saying, come on, follow me. Uh, we cut from that, though, to the uh, Kun and Rack reunion. Uh, Rack does say that he thought he died as well. He saw the big flash of light from that attack, and then he woke up here. So still we have no idea how he got there. Kun theorizes maybe there's another entrance to it somewhere. But, uh, yeah, no clue how, no clue how that works. Uh, then, uh, Hockney was hilarious when he was like, ah, talking alligator, I gotta draw this guy. So, Rack then attacks the monster that they're in from the inside, causing them to get all barfed up and stuff. Uh, funny as well, when they're barfed up into the water, Hockney's just holding the picture up out of the water to protect it. Uh, they're then saved by that girl, and we find out her name is Mi-Eum, or mi -Eum, mi -Eum. Um, and that's gonna be hard to decide on what to... How to pronounce that each time, but Miehum saves them with uh, this giant turtle, or at least it looks like a turtle, but who knows what it is, named uh, Goliath. So then she says that she's a wandering minstrel, and <laughs> the scene with Hockney thanking Goliath was both really cute and funny. Where he's just like, "Okay, you be safe. Go back out to sea now." And Goliath stands up. I live in an apartment. What's he talking about? Um, so then Miayum says her job is actually to lead warriors and to record their adventures, and warriors are what they call people who have entered there after finishing the Hell Train. Uh, they say though that most people spawn in the town, not fall from a door up in the sky. Sakun and Hakni are a bit weird. Uh, so then they go, they start heading to town, Miayum says that she's not anyone's memories, she's actually an NPC. But this world and everything and her as an NPC, they're all real to her. She was born and raised there. Uh, we get an explanation then about the sworn enemy system, which is maybe going to be one of the cooler parts of this arc. And the sworn enemy is basically an equal, or what do I, what should it be called? A being? A person? An equal being that's spawned in when you enter to keep people from getting too influential on the floor. Like if somebody super powerful just came in and started trying to take the place over it wouldn't be good. So they have to have an equal enemy that if they try to start uh, overstepping their bounds they'll show up. And apparently the monster was Rack's sworn enemy. Because uh, even though it's typically somebody that's like something from your past, you can create a uh, completely new sworn enemy if you have that sort of personality. It's something that you fear or like a rival, it's the fold for what you are. So uh, yeah, he sort of created that from his own imagination, sort of, uh, subconsciously. But uh, then we go back to bomb and stuff, and I like that uh, as they're walking along, he's observing Yu Han Sung, and uh, coming to think that he's crazy strong even just as a regular. Uh, Yu Han Sung says that he'll lead him to Young Zahard, because he figures that's where they're going, but the quarantine area, which is where they're at, is the furthest place away from him, so they have a bit of a ways to go. And he says that there are some, some, there are some safe places on the... Uh, floor, but as long as they're in the quarantine area, soldiers are going to keep coming after them. Then at the very end, we see that Bomb's sworn enemy gets spawned in, and his sworn enemy is himself. Viol's sworn enemy is Viol. Um, so, uh, that one thing it quickly made me think of, uh, 
going through and taking notes and stuff is uh, I thought, I was like, well, if that's the case, who is Zahard's sworn enemy? Uh, does Zahard not have one? Or if he does have one, is that maybe the evil that they were talking about that was left on the train? Um, who knows? Or, like, this is a crazy out there theory, and I would highly, highly, highly doubt it's true, but what if Zahard went as a good guy to um, save himself in the mirror, but then the... Uh, there was a bad version of him that spawned sort of like the bad version of Bomb, presumably bad version of Bomb here, and the bad version of him somehow escaped as the real person, so that's why Zahard is evil now when he was good before. That's highly, highly incorrect though, it's probably going to be completely wrong. It's just a thing that if CU did that I'd be like, ah, oh, that's kind of a cool way to write why Zahard is evil. The real one was just trapped on this uh, in this mirror the whole time. But uh, either way, uh, some of my guesses, I wrote down a couple guesses for sworn enemies because I thought that a few could be interesting if they were added into the arc. Rachel has said that she's scared of the night, which was a reference to Bomb, and her rival would obviously be Bomb. So is there going to be a third Bomb spawned into this place and we're just going to have three Bombs here? For Sachi or Boro, I'm thinking maybe Joaquin or Daniel, like Joaquin is an enemy, Daniel is a rival. I don't know, something like that for one of them, no clue. Uh, for Joaquin, it's probably going to be his father, but then again, Bomb has been really like a uh, rival them as well. So it'd be hilarious again if we had a fourth Bomb show up here. For Andrasi, the only person I would think of that would make sense to me would be Anox, since they are rivals, they're like friendly rivals, but her and Anak are rivals, so I feel like a Dada Anak would be cool as her sworn enemy. Uh, for Kuhn, only person I can think of, probably his father. Probably. Uh, could be a sibling, actually, but I'd say probably his father. Uh, for Hockney, Dada Heljo would be cool. And uh, for Irude, I wanted to throw Irude in here, because what if we uh, get a Dada Lore on the um, train, and he's like... Er, and they find out from Irure, oh yeah, since we're related somehow, they both have the same surname, so they're related somehow. Uh, since we're related, we grew up and we're rivals or something. And it'd just be a cool way to throw in a character that we already know. Um, so yeah, that's it. Some stuff that CU said in the blog, though, because there's actually, uh, compared to last week, or the week before, one of the past two weeks where there was pretty much nothing in the blog to, this, to discuss, there's a bit here. Uh, this week he said that uh, for the beginning of this arc, at least, for a little while, we're going to follow Bomb and Kuhn just to introduce the floor and get the plot moving. And then he said that they're going to uh, tell many stories throughout many stages from there. Since it is sort of like trapped in a video game world, there's going to be sort of stages to it. Uh, he also says he didn't want to really focus much on it being like they're in a video game, but rather for focus on the uh, aspect of it being virtual reality, being actually real, at least real to all the people that live there, it being an actual world, and just because it's made of data doesn't make it any less of a uh, real world in there, is uh, sort of the thing he wanted to focus on. So he said that because of that it may be more cyberpunk in nature than the video game, and I don't know if that's how you use the term cyberpunk, but uh, that's what the um, blog translation said, so I'm going with it. Uh, so uh, Also he said there's going to be stories about characters past, the ten families, and the tower itself, which, oh man, my body is ready for all three of those things. Uh, and lastly, he said the sworn enemy system is something that can be used to tell many stories, obviously, because you could put uh, somebody like Kuhn with his father, and we would get to learn about Edwan. At least I think, yeah, Kuhn Edwan's his father. Um, so we could learn about that, or like Irude and um, Lorey. There's so much that they can, uh, that you can do by telling stories through the sworn enemy system. Uh, so yeah, thoughts as a whole after this. I thought the art was better than usual. I don't know if it's just me, but, and I know CU's art is always improving, but I did think the art looked better than usual here. Um, at least it seemed that way to me. I also love Yu Han Sung here. I'm glad that CU chose Yu Han Sung as sort of the guide character to use. Um, I really, really like the character. And I like how uh, the data one is being portrayed so far. Uh, NPCs also could be interesting. NPCs like Miyum in telling their Miyum in telling their story, uh, and how the world is reality to them, and getting into that could be really, really good. 
Uh, also the sworn enemy setup again it's a really good system I think it's going to be great for telling stories and uh, last thing I thought reading this is that Hockney already is such a great part of the main cast I love seeing Hockney as part of the main cast uh, so yeah that's it really great score because though it was mostly set up and information I just I thought it was great I thought it was really 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 good um, so I'm giving it 9.5 out of 10, actually. 9.5 Wandering Minstrels out of 10. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. I actually can't believe I got through all that in 10 minutes. It felt like it felt like I talked about a lot for it to only be 10 minutes. But either way, like if you did like the video and comment down there, to tell me what you thought of this week's um, chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it and all of that. Subscribe for more Tower of God much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel or talk to you there. Also, if you would like a uh, link to our Discord server, uh, just ask and I can um, give you one of those and you can talk to me and everybody else there. So uh, that's it, I guess. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.